Welcome back on this Sunday morning. Have you ever felt like your job is not fulfilling? Maybe you want to make more of an impact? We found a school in East Austin that is helping students take their careers to the next level, helping them help others. It's not what you might expect a higher education institution to look like. But then again, Austin doesn't do things by the book. So they can get a sense of progress and growth. John Colco opened the Austin Center for Design in 2010. And so a big reason that you wouldn't find us sort of at the top of a, a big skyscraper downtown is because almost all of the work is immersive. Students go spend a lot of time with the real people that they're trying to help. Students bring a range of skills to the table to study complex social problems and through a series of steps develop a solution. This team is six months into it. We realize that there's a lot of fear that, that happens around birth. After interviewing expecting mothers, they've created an app to help them take control and through a series of questions, come up with a plan for friends and family before the baby comes. We heard things like, uh, I assumed everyone would know what to do and nobody knew what to do. And Scott Gerlach and his team are tackling a different issue. When people are leaving the hospital, they're given a ton of information all at once. Typically, they don't absorb all that information. They have complications. They are now developing a service to help medical providers offer better support during that critical time. Many of the alumni, like Cheyenne Weaver and Diana Griffin, are still running the business that was born here. It's called Girls Guild. Um, we're a service that connects girls and women with artists and makers of all kind uh, through long and short-term apprenticeships. There are at least two things you will not find inside these four walls, a lack of productivity and passion. We've really, you know, moved an idea and an interest in a topic through into, uh, through research prototyping and into a startup that we're now piloting. Because that's what they're building, uh, and so they start to sketch out what... And this morning, the founder who you just saw in the story is here with us live, John Colco. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. So definitely not your traditional school. I think the big question is, how did you come up with this idea? Yeah, it's a, it's a little off the, the beaten path. Uh, so I was working at a, at a large global consulting firm um, that was doing multi-million dollar programs with big Fortune 500 clients. Um, and uh, the work wasn't fulfilling for me, and I saw that it wasn't fulfilling for a lot of the, the sort of junior staff that were there. And I wondered if there was a way that I could train um, people in the process of design, but but do impactful, meaningful work at the same time. Mm -hmm. Of course, while we were there getting video, I snapped a few still photos to show what the inside looks like. It's very visual. You saw some of those, um, right. some of that in the in the package, the post-it notes, the pictures on the wall, the storyboarding process. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Uh, well, it's sort of an organized mess, um, and, and uh, you know, students learn how to do all of those things, and then they tell stories about how the future could be. Um, and so a big part of that is helping other people see the vision that you have that starts to formalize. Um, so we teach, the, we teach students how to sketch, um, we teach them how to think across time and how to tell a good, meaningful, and compelling story. Mm -hmm. And so you've got um, another class, so to speak, right. starting in the fall, and now is the time to sign up, but there's not a lot of spots. Yeah, we try to keep the program small. Um, I've found that if you scale it sort of above 10, 11, 12 people, um, you lose the one-on-one the -on -one relationship with the teacher and the professor, and since our teachers are all um, a active practitioners, their time is really, really meaningful and important. Uh, so we'll try to keep it to about eight or nine students, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, now would be a good time to get the application in. So how do you decide? How do you pick and choose? who will be part of the program. You know, it's interesting. I'm not looking for students that have any background in visual design or sketching or anything like that. Um, I'm looking for students that have passion uh, for making a difference in the world and also for people who have sort of realized that whatever their first job was, that first career path, isn't really fulfilling. It's not scratching the full itch for them. Yeah, in that story, we didn't get into it, but Anna, she is a photographer. She yeah. teaches classes at St. Edwards. Yeah. And then Scott is a high school tutor. Um, so just backgrounds from, from all over. Some yeah. did computer design and things like that, but it's the teams coming together, kind of putting their skills 
to good use. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the students have a, a really sort of diverse set of backgrounds. I had a derivatives trader at some point in there. So, uh, you know, they, they sort of come from all walks of life, but they're looking for something meaningful that can be creative, too. Mm -hmm. And so where do people go to apply? Uh, you can go to the website, ac4d.com, um, and uh, you, can, you can apply there. You can also learn a little bit more about um, other students, other projects, and other things that we've done in the past. All right. We'll have that story, this interview, and that link on our website shortly at kxan.com.